no job because uh, Sally got fired and she came and told you. You didn't get pissed off and go and tell the boss, I'm mad right, that you fired right. me too. Church is the only place that you will let some sucker cause you to leave God because they mad. And you say, whatever it takes, I'm all in. Whatever it takes. Scripture says, whatever we do in word or deed, do it as if we're doing it unto the Lord. Colossians 3 and 17. Whatever we do in word or deed, do it as if we're doing it unto the Lord. Not unto pastor, not unto Lady T, not unto your pastor, not unto your homegirl or sister Blow. It's unto the Lord. Whatever we do, we do it as if we're doing it unto the Lord. Some of you will have to repent tonight. So, so I, I want to run through the life of Christ. And I thought about um, when, when Pastor Tucker was in school, in high school, uh, he played football. And he was all in it. He probably was the only one, because we was the only two at home, uh, that he was allowed to go to the football game. Mm -hmm. I only knew if we won because we stayed on the corner yeah. and the bus came by and if they were cheering, Derek, I knew we won. Because yeah. yeah. my daddy was strict. I couldn't go. But he could go because he played ball. And, and, and when he was all in anything from the streets, he was all in. All right. But when he came over to this side, yeah. Listen, you had to know him before this side to know that he's all in this. Some of you will have to take a lead from your pastor to know that if my leader is all in, show sure enough I can be all in too. I had the privilege and the honor of pastoring he and Lady T. I don't think I ever had to sit him down or her, I don't think. You know, it's been a while and I don't got age over time. But the idea of it is, you know, okay. <laughs> she remembers that. Listen, but but nobody stopped coming. That's right. Yeah. That's right. They kept being committed to the assignment that was on their lives. Listen, this will mess me up with church folk. You cannot be all in if you wish you wash. We are the most emotional Christians I ever seen in my life. So I done seen people come, I done seen them go, I done seen some of everything happen in church. But we are the most wishy-washy Christians. Right. And some of us shouldn't even have the title of Christian. Listen. You just should be a passerby. Because that's the only time we see some of you is in a pass-by setting. So, so I want you to understand, as I was preparing this, I said, Lord, I said, only thing that I can remember, because I wasn't with him when he left church on Sundays, when he first came to Christ. Yeah. Until Lady T, you know, if you ever heard her tell the story, how she got put out, you know, every week. Because he was like, baby, we going to heaven. She said, no, we're going to hell. <laughs> yeah, every shot, you know, we're going to hell. He said, no, no. <laughs> so, 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 to his understanding, when he got a clear understanding of the Word of God and an understanding of how to live this life, yeah. I'm all in. Yeah. Listen, you got to make sure that no matter what, if you're not all in tonight, yeah. you make sure you become all in. Yeah. Whatever it takes. I'm all in. When I look at the life of Christ, here in our text, the Jews uh, got a little upset because Jesus, uh, he actually healed on the Sabbath, so he broke the Sabbath, and then uh, it wasn't just that. They really got offended because he said that he was uh, uh, God's son and that he wanted to be equal to God. But I said, he didn't say that. He just said he was God's son. Do you know that's how some of you interpret one another? Because somebody said something, you 
for a trip and maybe something else? Yeah. Oh, come on in here, somebody, because you just did it today. Listen, you got to understand, here it is, here it is. Christ, his response was, listen, I don't, I don't do nothing of myself. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I do, I do because the Father told me to do. Yeah. Listen, some of you can't say that because you ain't all in. Some of you can't say that because the Holy Spirit ain't telling you what to do. Listen, you better understand when the Holy Spirit is in you, he said he'll lead you, he'll guide you, and he'll tell you what you ought to say. He'll tell you what you ought to say. And you won't have no whoops. Oh, did I say that? You know, have you ever said something you thought about it about 20 seconds later? Should I have said that? You don't have the Holy Spirit. Jesus. So, what I found out is that we have a lot of people that we say a thing and our actions say something else. We say we all in. Pastor, I got your back. I'm telling you, listen, I've been preaching 20 years. I've been preaching 20 years. Listen, I promise you, I've heard that about 700 and million times. And out of all the people that said that to me, they ain't even with me. I want to ask them, how in the world are you all in with me? I got your back. How you have my back and you at home? How you have my back and you at somebody else's church? How you have my back and you dog in this back? I only want to do what my leader asked me to do. I don't want to try to do nothing else. I ain't trying to get in somebody else's lane. I ain't trying to do what nobody else is trying to do. I'm only going to do what my leader asked me to do. Listen, listen. Uh, 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 I remember a time when Jesus was at an event and they said, Jesus, Rabboni, teacher, your mother and your brother love time. And he said, who is my mother? Who is my brother? I don't know them people. Listen, at some point in this Christian walk, you're going to have to learn to forsake family. All right, all right. I know I crossed a whole bunch of lines with some I'm not crossing my family. The same ones that ask you why you at church all the time. The ones that ask you why you always up there with them. Everyone. Yeah, everyone's talking about. Listen, in the book of Mark, the 10th chapter, 28th verse, Peter, always Peter, it's always Peter. Peter tells Jesus, we're forsaking all to follow you. You know, and he said, Jesus turned around and said, if you forsake them all to follow me, you forsake mama, you forsake brothers, you forsake sisters, you forsake your daddy, you forsake your houses. He said, and lands. He said, I give it back to you a hundredfold in this present time. Listen, the same way Jesus can forsake his own mama because right now it's ministry. Listen, but he says that's what's going to come with it. Persecution. Oh, they're going to talk about you because you forsake them. What messed me up when you look at that text, it never says that he'll give you back fall. He never said it. He said because God is our father. That's it. Yeah. You don't need another daddy. Yeah. yeah. He said, because I, you already have one. He said, but I give you back houses. I give you back lands. He yeah. said, I give you back more siblings than you could ever imagine. Yeah. My kids always say, Mike, you, we got more siblings. And I said, because out of the time of my life, I forsake you for ministry. Yeah, yeah. Wow. But look what you have now. Yeah. I'm a mother to so many people. Yes, yes, yes. Because I learned how to forsake my own children. Yeah, yeah. For ministry. Yeah, yeah. I didn't say for clubbing. That's right. Right. I didn't say for dropping it like it was cold or hot. I said ministry. Yeah. 
Some of you are forsaking them for the wrong thing. All right. And blaming it on ministry. My. And you're going to be the ones that will cause your children to leave ministry. Yeah, yeah. My. So, Jesus was all in, all the way even to the cross. Yeah. Whatever it took, yeah. my assignment is to do what my father says for me to do. Even in the garden, when he had a little episode, that, you know, yeah. why am I? Why am I? <laughs> You know, it wasn't but a 20 second. You know how you trip for about 20 seconds or 20 minutes, how does it work for you? Listen, but he asked God, Father, let this bitter cup pass. Some of you will have to ask God to let this bitter cup pass. Some of you still holding on to grudges and things from the past. Help it pass. And it's holding you from doing what God has really called you to do. You cannot do ministry effectively when you still have grudges. When you still have hatred, when you still have malice in your heart. Listen, I'm reminded of a story of the Ethiopian runner. He was at a, 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 a Olympics and they was doing the, the long distance running. And everybody was coming in, except him. Whole two hours later, he done failed, he done skinned his knee up, he limping. But he finally comes in and crossed the finish line. And the reporter asked him, why you didn't quit a long time ago? The race been over. Yeah, yeah. Everybody already gone. He said, my country didn't send me here yeah. to win. They sent me here to finish. Right. But you got to understand that God needs some finishers. Okay. Yeah. He don't need nobody that's on the sideline watching. He needs some finishers, somebody that know how to make ministry work, know how to do ministry. And if you never paid attention to your leaders, then shame on you. Right on. Right, right. You know what I mean? Ninety-nine point ninety-nine percent of the time, they at the church for something. I ain't never seen nobody. I said, listen, y'all more, y'all at church more than I ever have been. Listen, but when you're all in. It don't matter. I'm not going to wait on you to move something when I can move it. And I'm not going to ask you. I'm telling you, if you've never learned your pastor, you better learn it now. Listen, because we learn from the best. Listen, my father, if he had to ask you one time and you didn't do it, he'll never ask you again. Never ask you again. My people will tell you, if I got to ask you more than one, I won't ask you more than one. The devil is foolish. If you see those pictures, he was working. Listen, yeah. not saying nobody else was working. I'm just going by what I seen. But you know, I know he, he like his daddy. If he can do it, he going to do it anyway. Right, 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 right. Listen, you got to have that kind of tenacity, yeah. that kind of heart to know that I'm all in. Yeah. Whatever it takes, yeah. I'm all in. Yeah. I don't care what nobody say. I'm going to do what I need to do yeah. to make ministry work. Yeah. Listen, I was reminded of a story. My father. I told you I've been in church all my life. My father said, I had a lady in our church and I didn't know she was messy when I was a kid. Yeah. Didn't know she was messy. But she was my Sunday school teacher. And believe it or not, she was my she was the one that really made me study the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because watching her made me want to be the preacher. Yeah. yeah. I mean, she knew she knew this Bible inside and out. Had no, I had no had desire that this woman was messy at all. Because I didn't see her like that. Listen, we were, my mother ended up being over the same auxiliary that she got demoted from, <coughs> got demoted from. And the, the pastor told my mother, go and ask her for the church car so you can order the material. So when she would ask her, I need the church car. Oh, don't worry about it. I got it. Yeah, yeah. So if anybody know my mother, she don't take too many of those. Listen, and uh, by the second time, she went to the pastor and said, now listen, you know me. Now I'm gonna ask this woman about two or three times and she keeps telling me don't worry about it, she got it. So we end up going to this church, never forget as long as I live. We in, in where was we at? Lake Como. Lake Como. The church had a lot of stairs going down, you know. And uh, 
she made a little snappy remark, and my mother went to grab her. And our pastor said, Sister T, please don't do it. Please don't do it. <laughs> Listen, he gave, gave me the keys and said, at least y'all, you and Greg, y'all go, y'all go meet us at Bronx, drive your mama in the car. But we was cool. We still didn't know what was going on. I had no clue. Listen, some, some 15, 20 years later, it came up at home. We were talking about something. And I said, Daddy, why y'all, why y'all didn't tell us? And he said, it wasn't your business. Yeah. Yeah. He said, we, as long as I can remember, my, my parents never discussed church business in front of us. He said, you loved her. And if we would have said something to you about her, he said, it would have caused you to leave. It would have caused you not to want to study the word. He said, because it was so important for us to let you keep thinking she was a good person. Right, he right. said, but let me tell you, it's going to take that type of person, it's going to take the bonds, it's going to take the talking, it's going to take all of these different types of people to make up a church. Right, right. He said, so you will have to learn how to work with everybody. That's right. If you're the messy one, I would hate for you to get pushed down the stairs. Listen, 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 I'm almost done. Listen, I, I want to call, I want to call a few witnesses. Come on, witnesses. Call them. Stand. Call them. Amen. I want them to let you know whatever it takes, you got to be all in. Yeah. yeah. No matter what it looks like, no matter what people say, you got to be the one that you're all in. Listen, I learned from, from this lady a long time ago. How you cut people from being messy is to take them to who they talking about. Yeah. And listen, I bet you they won't. Maybe they get more prone than all with a laugh. Oh no, that, no, that's okay. You know? But that's how you kill messy people. You hear me? Listen, and if we do enough of that, people won't carry on so many clips and so many people. This section and this section and this person. You won't have all that in the church. Right. But somebody got to be the one to say, oh, it's not happening on my watch. You hear me? It's got, it's got to be somebody that's going to say, it's not happening on my watch. Then why would you, you, you the old folks say, a dog that bring a bone? Yeah. Come on, the same mess that they talking about, they talking about you too. Listen, listen, so, so I, I want you to know that you're going to have to be all in, whatever it takes. I mean, whatever it takes. Lady T, I called, we was talking, and I said, where you at? Yes, she was just getting off work, and she was telling me, kissing people, bye, bye. You know how she hugged everybody. She told everybody, bye. Everybody, bye. And look like it wasn't even 10 minutes, 5 minutes, she at the church. I said, where are you at now? Oh, I'm at the church. <laughs> you you want to go home? You want to go home first? No, 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 I got to go feed the fish. <laughs> you mean there's nobody to feed the fish? <laughs> Whatever it takes. I might be tired of my body, yeah, yeah. but whatever it takes. Yeah, right, right. I might not feel like coming to Bible study, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I'm coming. Yeah. Might not feel like coming to 8 o'clock service, yeah. but guess what? Yeah. I'm there. Yeah. Whatever it takes. I don't care if I didn't sleep well the night before. I don't care if I had a bad night. I'm still in place. Yeah. Now, everybody can't say that. Right. Everybody can't say, because you listen, I'm telling you something. I just found this out. We did 10 o'clock service September, and yeah. we moved back to 11 o'clock in October. So September, we didn't do Sunday school. So I said, surely Sunday school people be on time, because it was 10 o'clock, so Sunday school started at 9 45. Yeah. They should be on time for that. People still was like, how in the world can you be late and last while we started at 10? Yes, sir. I know they want to win. Action speaks louder than words. What messed me up? 
I can't get mad at you. Because you don't understand the assignment that's on your life. Come on, come on. We got a lot of people have quit assignments because of people. You hear me? People have walked away from their call because of people. I don't like the way they talk to me. But yeah. you still at that job. Yeah. And the people talk crazy to you. I mean, slap crazy to you. We thought you was tough. But you want to be tough with us. Because we tell you, oh no, you can't serve today. I can't serve. No, you can't, you can't serve today. What? Oh, I can't sing today? No, no, you can't sing today. Come on, open that door, open that door. What are you talking about? Oh, I was just, I, I, I missed one rehearsal. Just sit but down. You can't sing today. I'm going to go talk to the pastor. Come on, come on. Why am I going to talk to the pastor? You might as well call for yourself. Come on, now. I'm calling the choir all over the world. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. Oh, at some point in time, you will have to be committed and be all in to what God called you to do. That's, listen, I'm telling you, that's why you see different people in different places in church. Because they ain't all in. The worship trying to sing on the praise team, the praise team leader trying to do the, the communion. This ain't your job. I'm just trying to fit in. No, no, just do your part. Stay in your lane. Be all in about that. And then maybe God will elevate you, you know, sometime in a couple of years. Maybe. Listen. Listen. I want to call a couple of witnesses to the stage. So, uh, I was studying a cypher Nisha woman. And uh, I want to ask her to come to the stand. Cypher Nisha woman, can you come to the stand? Come on. Work yes, it. Apostle. I can. Work it. Work it. Well, come on. Can you tell the people how you were all in? Yes, ma'am, I can. All right, <laughs> talk to the people. Well, I went to, to see. Jesus, because I heard that he was a healer. Uh, yeah. And my daughter was very, very sick. And I had so many obstacles against me. One, I was a Canaanite. Two, I was a woman. And I really had no business talking to a man. But my situation was a little different from anybody else's because my daughter was at the brink of death. Uh -huh. And so, listen, I didn't mind that he told me that, uh, uh, would I mind being a dog, eating the crumbs yeah. off the floor? You can call me a dog, sir, but I need my daughter yeah. here, whatever it takes. I just want to make sure that my child was healed. Uh -huh. Well, Cyphonisha woman, did your daughter get healed? Yes, ma'am. She did. Thank you. You can have your seat. Thank you. <laughs> listen, listen. I, I want to bring. I want to bring to the stand the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, oh, yeah. Can you come to the stand? Yes, ma'am. Listen. Can you tell the people whatever it took for you to get what you needed? Yes, ma'am. I sure can. Listen. I had this issue, a free flowing issue for 12 long years. Now don't look at me crazy, cause you got an issue too. And because somebody could smell my stench. Listen, yours, you don't think nobody can smell it. But you're stinking right now. Listen, I, I, I didn't care, I had spent all the money that I had and I was basically quarantined from my family and everybody. Listen, and, and, and I heard that Jesus was coming by and, and I needed to be healed. And so by any means necessary, I, I didn't care how I was gonna get to the man, but I had to get to the man. Listen, I, I, it was so thick, the 
crowd was so thick. Listen, I, I had to crawl for a little bit just to get to it. And when I finally got to it, all I could just touch was the thread. Listen, of his robe. Listen, and instantly, I was healed. Apostle, is that good for you? Show sure up, baby. Thank you. Take your seat. <laughs> Listen, I want to call Paul to the stand. <laughs> Listen, Paul, can you come and take the stand and tell the people just how you were definitely all in? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yes, work, work. Come here. Work, Listen, Apostle. When I got got to my place on the road to Damascus, I had an encounter with God, and, and I was blind for three days, found myself had to trust somebody that I really didn't know, and then found out that the people were more scared of me than I was scared of them, because I couldn't protect myself. Listen, the Lord brought my sight back, and from that day, I began to do His will. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I've been in prison. Yeah. Come on. I've been beat. Come yeah. on. I've been shipwrecked. All right. Yeah. Listen, I, I had a, a serpent to attach himself to my arm. Listen, and I slung him off, and they thought I had the bit of God. He said, "But listen, but I never took my position greater than what it was." I still knew that I was a servant of the Lord. Yeah, yeah. I didn't care how much fame came around about who I was. I still knew I was a servant of the Lord. Listen, whatever it took for me to follow Christ, I did it. Paul and Silas, Paul, me and Silas was in jail, and, and, and the only thing that I knew to do was to pray. Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. What, a good, what a quite good singer, son. But the fact of the matter, we sung. Yeah, yeah. And because we came together and sung, an earthquake came. Yeah, yeah. Shook loose everything. Yeah, yeah. Listen, if you've never had an earthquake experience with God, on, you might want to get you one. Oh, yeah. Where he'll shake you loose from some things. Shake you loose from some people. Shake you loose from your own mentality. Was that all right for you, Apostle? That's good for me, son. Thank you, sir. Listen, I want you to know today, you can mark it down in the books. October the 19th, 2019. Today, I make a decision that I'm going to be all in. Yes. 